But what do you think separates a good event from a truly great event? For, for me, it's we try to put the attendees like first, I guess, where we want to make sure that they're having a good time, that they get to meet everybody that they want to, that they have enough opportunity for networking. I mm. think the networking part is so, so, so important. Um, and making sure that you cater to what the community needs, really. And making sure diversity is important as well in your speaker set and making sure everybody feels safe and knows where they have to go if something comes up. Having, yeah. So quite a few things then, really. (laughs) Yes, it's actually, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Well, you mentioned diversity and that's one of the challenges that our industry and particularly I think the Swift community has struggled with. Um, finding a genuinely diverse and inclusive range of speakers to put on stage to get a range of perspectives and a range of backgrounds, not just a single sort of fixed message from a load of white men, for example. Um, And you obviously run a very large conference at Builders. How do you work towards finding a diverse range of speakers? You need to definitely put the effort in and be aware of, okay, we're having that many white males, we have that many female speakers, we have that many people of color. Um, I need to make an effort that everybody is represented, which means, yes, you have to then, you have a lot of people who are coming also to you who want to speak at the conference, right? And then you have to be like, okay, no, we really need to fill these slots with a diverse range of people, make an effort for it. And it, it's sometimes harder because there's um, there's only a set range, right, of people that you sometimes know about, but you really need to make an effort. It's important. Do you think uh, having a female female organizer encourages more women to come forward, particularly because you're well known? Um, You've spoken at events previously; they know your name. I have to say, it helps just because. I know also other female speakers. It makes it easier for me at least to like reach out and talk with them. I think that that helps and they they can talk with me about whatever little issues there might be. Um, But yeah, it it helps definitely. Well, presuming that they know you've been there, you know, you must have given your first talk at some point. Um, So you were that you were doing that. Oh, do I want to get on stage or not thing? And they, they are now doing they can ask your advice and say, you've been there, what did you do? How did you find it? What advice do you have to help me get better? Or can you put my name forward for other places and more? So it's a nice oh, con- yes. contact also, to have. Yes, I also, honestly, I have. I feel like I have to encourage more than I have to do with, with guys. Like women are oftentimes like, oh, I'm not sure. I don't know if I can speak. Um, I don't know if I know yet enough. And I've, I've been there, honestly. Um, and... Being able to actually speak to that and letting you know, no, you know actually enough and you can go up there and you can give a talk and people actually want to hear what you have to say and you're just underestimating yourself. Mm. Uh, That definitely, yes, is important. Yeah, it's powerful too because the, the only way we are genuinely going to change is by having representation in places like this. You know, if you want to be able to look at somebody and say, yes, they look like me. Yes, that could be me. I could be on that stage next year. And that's very hard to do if, if no one on that stage looks like you. You know, there was a conference, yes. um, it, it, it didn't make it through because of the pandemic, but this year there was a conference announced in the UK that had more people called Chris than it had all women. And uh, that is, you know, uh, it would have been hard to imagine five years ago, never mind 2020. Uh, and it makes me worry how much progress we're making. Because I know, I know folks yeah. like you are trying, I know Natasha tries very, very hard. Uh, uh, but it, sometimes it feels like we're almost standing still. We're not making enough progress to move forward. Yes. Yeah, I f- a lot of work needs to be done on encouragement because I can see it like when we have our call for papers, we have, I feel like 90% are guys mm. or even more than 90%. I think we had like two or three out of 70 from the call for papers. Wow. Yeah, it's it's... If anybody's out there and you're like part of a minority, <laughs> please go speak at conferences. I help you. You can reach out to me. 
I'm sure there are many other speakers in our community who want to help you and support you and get you there. We need it. Yeah, and, and if you are listening to this, uh, anybody like that, talk to Carola. She's, she's really friendly. She'll help you out. You could, she'll take you to Lugano. Lugano is gorgeous. Honestly, you've got no idea how beautiful this town is. It's the, the Italian section of Switzerland. It's, like I say, huge mountains, beautiful lakes, lovely people, great conference. Carola's there. Use this opportunity. We, we genuinely do want to help you get that first foot on the ladder. Because once you've done your first talk, you'll know, huh, I wasn't so bad. Or, huh, I hate speaking. But at least you know, <laughs> you know for sure, I like that, I want to do it again. Or I hate that, I never want to do it again. And that's what really matters, to have that first step to move forward with. And you can even start small. You don't need to be at a conference first. You can also just go to a local meetup, right, where you know a lot of people um, that helps and you can try a talk out at the meetups first and then get better and then go to a conference you don't need to start immediately with a conference or maybe you just want to give at your company a small talk about a recent feature that you worked on yeah one, one thing i find continually interesting is how some folks are genuinely against making a change um and literally as we've been talking about having a more diverse group of speakers on stage someone's pressed a dislike button on our video I can see this like it's gone up by one <laughs> because they go, no, I dislike the idea of having different men, people on stage, grr. Uh, and that's what we're fighting against. We're fighting against a very, very seriously entrenched 20, 30, 40 years of men doing this. And we've got a lot of change to, uh, to get through, I think.